Hi everybody, I'm Edgar. I'll be doing a video demonstration of my VLF Little Cutie Whistler Band receiver. As you can probably tell from the opening shot, I do have my physical limitations and it'd be very hard for me to get out into the woods and away from power lines because you've got to be a pretty good distance away from power lines to use an electric field type receiver. So because of the knolling properties of the loop, that is the loop antenna or the loop sensor as you will, is able to reject power line hum by directional characteristics, I decided to try the magnetic approach. And uh, yeah, I've got my physical limitations, but hey, guess what? <laughs> if your spirit's free and your mind is free, then you can be free. The Apostle Paul was a great example. He was uh, just preaching his heart out and free as he could be while he was in prison. So I say I'm free. And I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the demonstration right now. First of all, I could have used a fancy sensor, but to just be ridiculous and kind of a sight gag just for fun, I took my jumpers here. They're each 12 and a half feet long, just cheap speaker wire with alligator clips on the end. This forms a 12 turn loop on a 9 inch by 11 and a half inch box, which, uh, funny as it may be, the box is the copy stand I use to display the still pictures. So next we're going to hook it up and, and show you how deeply the, the loop will know. And uh, we get to the fun stuff because we're going to have the unit actually operating. And uh, I'll probably go ahead and show the circuit board first. It's a custom made circuit board I had made by uh, Far Circuits, F A R. A guy by the name of Fred Reimers has been making circuit boards for about 35 years. He does great work. And uh, he's not very expensive, so you can look him up, Google him on a search engine, and uh, he's there and he makes the boards. Well, here it is. This is the assembled circuit board, and uh, this is where the unit got its name from, Little Cutie. This cute little 1.6 by about, oh, I guess 5.1, I forgot the exact dimensions. It's a pretty small circuit board, and this thing is essentially a very serious little, little uh, VLF Whistler Band receiver. I might get a little huffy and puffy here. I need to point things out. I had to get a pointer. Okay. The reason this unit will work with something as simple as this ridiculous uh, old 12 turn loop is because first of all I'm using a step up transformer to step the audio voltage up by a factor of a little over 10 times. It's an 8 ohm to 1000 ohm transformer and it, it actually steps the voltage up a little more than 10 times. Okay, um, in here we have the network to, uh, well let's go over here to the very beginning. We have the resistors and capacitors to form the static bleed off network and the RF suppression and bypass. And in here we have the loading resistors to make sure that the transformer and loop have enough load on them to prevent ringing. Uh, if you prevent ringing then some of your extraneous signals are less likely to cause interference and it makes for a quieter sounding audio anyway. The preamp is the RC4558 it's a little op amp. It's not nothing fancy. It's not FET or anything. It's a bipolar transistor low noise audio op amp. And because this is a medium impedance that's being presented to it, this will actually work better than a lot of the FET op amps. We have uh, a capacitor in the feedback loop here, and it's set small to give low frequency roll off below about 1500 hertz. And then in the second stage, we have another one. So essentially, what I'm using here is a two-stage preamp and it's active filter to filter the lows out in stage one and in stage two and what that does that gets rid of the amplifier noise in the part of the band that's that you're trying to filter out I've tried a passive filter before the preamp and I got rid of a lot of the hum and the noise that way but first thing that happened after that is I could hear the low frequency amp hiss it came in so I decided I'd go active filtering to get rid of some of the amp noise and to provide the deep filtering to help uh, remove hum. So the thing is for people who may want to extend the low end like if they're out in open space of course those capacitors can be made larger and, and bring the low end back in. Okay enough of that for the preamp that pretty well uh, 
describes the preamp. It's nothing fancy. Of course, right here we have the LM386, and I use the N4 version. The N4 version is the best of the series. It'll do almost uh, a whole watt. The, I think typical on one of them is about 750 milliwatts, and they generally do that much or all the way up to about a watt. Okay, we have an LED for the peak indicator. The spirits and some of the VLF sounds have a very, very short duty cycle. They're actually what's called impulse sounds. They don't sound anywhere ne as near as loud as they are and they're of such short duration that even when the amplifier clips you can't hear it as distortion. It's just a pulse a few milliseconds wide and uh, you can't hear that it's distorted and what will happen is if your peaks are distorting you can actually run your gain way way up and amplify the noise that you're trying to get rid of and you don't even know that your peaks are severely overdriving because you can't you can't hear distortion they're just too short so the LED is a real valuable level indicator and if you set your gain this one uses a fixed control I didn't have the potentiometers at the time so I just put a resistor and it maxed it out and since I'm demonstrating it with a really minimal loop anyway max out will do fine until I'm ready to put a pot in it but the gain can be adjusted probably about the best compromise is to have it clip the peaks or show the LED flashing with uh, summer lightning maybe 300 miles away you can run your gain as low as say enough to make it blink when lightning's a hundred miles away and then if you do that your system will never be an overload and uh, with an outdoor loop like I'm using here at the house 40 feet behind the house and it's a 15 by 15 loop with uh, 10 turns I can receive lightning generally over a thousand miles with the same type of circuit in my home base receiver. Okay, here's the speaker that you'll be hearing the VLF out of. We got quite a bit of noise right now and it's for some pretty simple reasons. We can pull it down quite a bit. The speaker, and uh, while most speakers this size are totally unsuitable, this is a Kobe Tone speaker that I got from Mauser Electronics, 2 inch by 3 inch, and uh, its frequency range in the 1000 hertz to 20,000 hertz range. In other words, your mids and your upper highs on this one are pretty smooth and pretty accurate, especially for a $4 tiny speaker. And it's, uh, it's in a project box with a cardboard enclosure around it, and it'll be a receiver, a complete receiver later on. But since the speaker is in its sub box and since it has acoustical material behind it, it's a good speaker for the demonstration. So that's why I'm using it. Now this is going to be the fun part. First we'll zoom the camera out. And then we'll, as you can see, we're definitely in the house. And an E-field receiver would be useless in the house mostly because there's too much electrostatic field being radiated by the by the electric power wiring in the house and even when this box loop is nulled out that is set for minimum home we're still going to get some noise because the video this is not just a camera it's a camera connected to what I call a video rig it's a full size DVD recorder by light on and it's recording the program as I speak. So uh, the solenoids and motors in this DVD recorder, they're in pretty close proximity to the loop, so I won't be able to get them completely out. 